What up, what up, what up, what up? And welcome to another episode of Fingers in the Batter. I am your host, MRT, and with me, the ambitious homie, Eric. Yeah, what's up? Are you surprised I didn't call you? Yes, <laughs> I was waiting for that, like I have a timer now in my head. For... <laughs> <laughs> and today we have a very special host. San Bernardino's finest, the owner and CEO, founder of Real Talk Real Actions, Mr. Ruben Gomez. What's up, everybody? Hey, Ruben. Thank What's you for up, joining Ruben? us yeah, today. No, thank you guys for having me. Yes, yes, yes. Um, we will also add your uh, Instagram handle. It'll pop up somewhere like right here. So cool. It'll probably be floating. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So um, your Instagram clout can go up or our Instagram clout could go up. Probably it, that second one. The second one, yeah. <laughs> we don't got no clout right now. It's all good. It's a process, and yeah. everybody starts at zero. Yeah, I know. It's it's a tedious process, but you know the people that are listening, they're listening. That's what I've re- come to realize, and I'm okay with that. That there's people that like will tell us certain things that you would have to know if you were wa- really yeah, watching. Yeah, if you listened in, yeah. And I appreciate that more than anything else yeah, yeah everybody else who wants to help us out uh just go ahead yeah. before you go to sleep or while you're showering uh watch our episode <laughs> you don't even have to pay attention <laughs> just leave your phone on right there and it'll help us out with our uh just leave it on play <laughs> yeah leave it on play it's okay ignore me you can hear me talk about nonsense at another time you can hear him talk about nonsense in person <laughs> yeah <laughs> so which i why. always do never fails um happy cinco de mayo guys yeah yeah Where's the tequila shots? Um, no, that's weird, huh? Yeah, Nobody. No more tequila for me. No more tequila. Okay. <laughs> well, on that point, we're cele- I'm celebrating a year of sobriety today. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Um, <laughs> also on the podcast is uh, Ruben's daughter Maya. <laughs> Maya. <laughs> so. Um, to celebrate Cinco de Mayo and my sobriety, we're going to celebrate with a toast here on no, Fingers in the Batter. <laughs> Some toast. We're going to celebrate by toasting with a toast. Yeah. Do you eat bread? Uh, I do. I'll eat one. I don't really eat white bread, <laughs> but yeah, it's for a good for, cause. For one year of sobriety. Cheers to Cheers. sobriety. Toast. Sobriety. <laughs> Now yeah. that makes that. Now I feel like my tequila comment is inappropriate. <laughs> it's okay. I don't know. A little mind. bit. A little <laughs> bit. It's a little insensitive. Um, how long do you normally drink or no? Um, yeah, like here and there, I'm more of like a kind of like a what would you say, social drinker. Mm. So if like I'm with a group of friends, I'll drink one, two. Um, I have like. I did go to Vegas recently, and I was that guy. It was bad. <laughs> it was bad. But uh, other than that, you know, I try to keep it keep it cool. Yeah. Not, not overdo it. Yeah, I had to stay sober because I was always that guy. So uh, <laughs> even like on a Wednesday night, <laughs> I was that guy. But um, I'm more mature now in that sense. Not in all senses, but definitely uh, a lot more uh, aware of where i should be and what activities i should not be partaking in right right so um it's just it's the beginning becoming self-aware. yeah i'm gonna try to go for at least one more year yeah and so another we'll year <laughs> another year and we'll see how that goes and another one eventually uh i might partake in the activities every now and then yeah i went like probably like four months like nothing and then i just had one night where it just like I just fell victim to the peer pressure. I was like, no, no. And then <laughs> I was supposed to be the designated driver. And <laughs> they were just, they bought me drinks. And I was like, no, like, I'm good. And they're like, we already bought it. Like, I have to just one. I'm like, Stop I want a drink. And then that, you know how that ends. So, yeah. I mean, I've been there before. I'm always hey. like, yeah, don't worry. I'll dr- I won't drink today. Okay, with the toys, please. <laughs> ah. Amaya. <laughs> um, well, does Maya like Star Wars? Mm. No. I haven't put her up on game yet. I'm not even really up That's on game That's what I say. Are you into Star Wars? I'm not really? even really into uh, it. Our daughters, are, my daughters are like extremely into Star Wars. She's all into Power Rangers. 
Yeah, recently. Uh, well, yesterday was May the fourth. Oh yeah. So, any like if I was drinking, I would have been smashed all throughout this weekend because tomorrow is <laughs> Revenge of the Sixth, anyways. So, it's like a three day holiday, or it used to be a three day holiday for me. But um, California just recently made May the fourth an official, an wait, official wait, California holiday. Official State Star holiday. Wars, I don't know what it was. They just rec- actually like officially recognized May fourth as Star Wars Day. Star mm. Wars Day, okay. That's cool. Huh? Imagine like the guys who invented that. <laughs> They're like everybody just like took their idea and ran with it. <laughs> I wonder if they partook in any of that like celebration. Definitely. They're probably at home like I hate I hate everybody. They don't even <laughs> like Star Wars no more. They're all, like, all ripped off and stuff. Um, also in Geek News, the new Sonic trailer came out. Oh yeah, I seen that. How'd you yeah. feel about that? Um, I'm glad they're redoing it. <laughs> Did you see yeah. it? Like, like yeah. they actually cool. took into account like people reacting to it online. Yeah. And then they're they're changing it to be more like the car- video game character, I guess. Yeah, everybody was making fun of it. It did look kind of <laughs> creepy. I looked at it and I was like, this thing looks weak. Yeah. And then and then it had uh, Jim Carrey in it, and I was like, why would he even attach his name to this? It seemed like such a B movie. And. Like, next thing I know, like, YouTube explodes, and everybody's, like, all the animators start, like, oh, they no, should Maya. make it like this, they should make it like that, and I guess they were listening, because, I mean, I think, I forgot, it had, like, double the dislikes on the trailer than it had actual likes. <laughs> yeah. And people were like, oh, I'm so excited for the movie, like, oh, you little liar, like, <laughs> that shit looks <laughs> whack as hell, like. There's no way that you, like, if you if you said, if you shared that and you were excited to see it, you didn't really see the trailer yeah. <laughs> at all. You saw it and just shared it you and s- wrote that you were, like, that was your childhood thing. You, you saw know? the trailer came out and you just shared it. Yeah, exactly. Like, and I feel, actually played it. I feel like everybody does that with certain things. Like, they see an article and, like, they, they just read, like, the headlines and they're like, mm-hmm. dude, mm-hmm. that's deep. Let me share yeah, I know, and they just Literally. share it and that's it. Like... I, I, I did that before one time. I, like, <laughs> I learned my lesson because I, I posted a comment, I mean, a, a article, and then somebody, like, actually read it. Mm-hmm. And... It was like from like 2014. <laughs> this is so old ass article. It's all outdated. And I was like, like, yeah, my bad. I'm gonna start you know, getting into all this like. The stuff research. that gets me in trouble is like I'll share people's like posts, and I won't like react to their original posts. Oh like, yeah. Oh, it's funny. I'm gonna share it. I just like share it. I guess it's like stealing. Yeah. On the internet, and it's been frowned upon i guess it was more, i think it was more frowned upon back then like when it first started because people used to be like oh i'm gonna copy this or i'm gonna take this picture or i'm gonna take this post and like they would actually ask for permission now it's just people just do it and yeah i think it's just i follow like a hundred meme pages on instagram for some reason <laughs> because like every time so your somebody feeds tags, all memes yes it's annoying now um and what's more annoying is that like i get I keep getting tagged on all these like Instagram pages and they're all private so I follow them and now that I follow like a hundred of them they all post the same stuff like it's this I already know like I bet myself like I bet I see one funny thing and I'm like I'm gonna see it like five more times on five other meme pages and sure enough there it is like yeah. in a row too like wow this is ridiculous yeah I followed a couple of this, um, on the same like scenario like somebody tagged me in it but they're private so mm-hmm. you have to go like them but when you go like them, it takes a while for them to, for like, uh, or no, when you go follow them, um, it takes a while for them to actually accept you. Yeah. And then when you do get accepted, it's like, all right, now which post, like, it won't even show me, yeah. like, the post that they tagged me in. So I'm like, well, which one, like, which one was it? Yeah. Like, like, which was relatable to yeah. me and that yeah. person. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. And then, too, like, you'll be, like, private and they're, like, they expect you to follow the page. Like, just next time. If you know the page is private, just screenshot it and yeah, send it to me. Yeah, screenshot it. Or, well, it's because all the videos, too. There's then you need to start doing that because the last three <laughs> meme pages I follow are because you do that. <laughs> My bad. Let's see. Now I'm doing the same thing. Like, now I'm putting it I was it like, should I, should I tell him? I'm like, now he's like taking it a lot further. Like, I'm going to make sure he knows he's doing that. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, in music news, 
Logic and Eminem uh, released the new track called Homicide. Did you guys listen to that? I haven't. Yes. Like probably, I'd say like five or six times. You didn't hear it? Mm Mm-mm. What the? (laughs) Eric. What? Eric, look, Ruben. Eric in the eighth grade had like one of those cholo folders with pictures of Eminem all over it. All over it. Go put this back, please. Explain yourself, Eric. Do you want to go pass that? <laughs> <laughs> That's when Eminem was cool. <laughs> I mean, Eminem is still kind of cool. Yeah. His, but not. I don't like all his music as much as I did back then. It's different now. Yeah, because he's sober. Also, like, he was telling some of his story, like, in, in, like, his personal life back then. Now it's just rap. It's just putting words together, rhyming, and it's like, I mean, there's you know, probably more metaphor. depth to it now, yeah, you know, more skill. I mean, it's, I guess it's just that. It's just displaying, like, his, you know, his abilities to, you know, rhyme pretty much anything he wants. And then also, like, with these different, like, metaphors, he has all kind of different metaphors. and But it's not, like, telling a story. And, you know, so out of those three releases from Logic's, you know, like, the Confessions, uh, what is the Confessions of a, what is it called? You know what I'm talking about? The... <coughs> On the first one he released, or no, the Keanu Reeves was the first one he released for the new album, and then it was that the Confessions, and then it was this one. Uh huh. I, I think I like that Confessions one a lot better. And that's what it, the it, album's called too, right? It's like Confessions of a something. I know what you're yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah. But I can't, I'm not a Logic fan. Yeah, like I'm a, I, I'm a Logic fan, but I don't like everything, you know. Uh, I, I like did that. like I could sing along to that like. The suicide hotline one. That one made me more depressed. Like <laughs> strangely, like that one didn't make me feel like I. I. It was just when you're singing along to it, it's like you're singing like I just want. I don't want to be alive. Oh, so, like yeah. it's like I, like I'm saying these words now. Like and it's <laughs> it's weird. I like, felt the same way too. It's because if you watch the video, it makes sense. But if you're just oh, yeah, listening to the song. Yeah. It's very, like, you could, like, if you just heard it randomly, you could take that, like, really out of context. Yeah, really exactly. Fast. Especially if you don't listen to it all the way through to the end. Yeah. Because <laughs> at the end, he says he wants to be alive. Yeah, he's like, oh, That's at the end of the song. <laughs> yeah. Like, imagine if you just heard, I don't want to be alive. <laughs> like, you know what? It's a, it's a hit song. <laughs> <laughs> sucks. Uh, like, in Doctor Strange, that they don't put the warnings before the, the spell or whatever. Like, this one, it tells you all of that, and then at the end, it's when you're like, no, you should want to be alive or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but I I thought it was, like you said, like, I thought I miss old Eminem, but then by saying that, it's like, oh, I wish he was on drugs again, huh. which is not a good thing. I don't wish that. Mm-hmm. I mean, he could um, act like he's on drugs, at least. <laughs> I wonder if, like, he could, but I don't think no. so. I think he's, like, 10 years sober now, or, like, yeah. 11 years sober, or something like that, which is pretty good given the fact that it's like two first albums were like just heavy drug use so i mean i guess we all come to the point where like oh i don't want to party like that no more yeah for you sure know? i've definitely felt that way like I, I would wake up hung over like oh like this is terrible i'm never gonna drink again that was, that was and me. then like eight hours later i was like i could have another beer but i grew that <laughs> yeah <laughs> Like, sometimes, like, you feel like you need one, like, when you're hungover. Like, just give me one just to kind of Yeah, but, I think, back, but... I think that's just, like, the alcohol dependency yeah. that your body has. Because now, I don't wake up and I'm like, oh, I need a beer. Oh, I don't yeah. wake up like that. The way, like, my mentality works now is, like, I'll be at an Angels game and I wish I could have a beer. Or... It's somebody's birthday and everybody's taking shots. I wish I could have a shot. Yeah. But it's like before, if we were all sitting down mm. and I was trying not to drink, like if you had a beer, I was like trying not to drink. But I was in the same time, I was like, my body was like hoping that you would offer me one. And yeah. then like I would say no, like maybe two or three times. But by like the fourth time, I'm like, all right. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm like, just one. And then next thing I know, like got I've, your shirt off. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I like it's like I'm a twelve pack in, and then on the way home I'm having another one, and like right before bed, like that was the one that really like messed with my mind. Like why did I drink the last one right before bed? That one was not gonna do anything to me, like because yeah, I'm gonna go to, go to sleep. Go to sleep. Like, so I just wasted it in a way. 
Yeah. Yeah, so, but we're all beyond that. Yeah. And then. Yeah. Eric's all like, like, I can't relate. (laughs) But you don't drink that much. I think you stopped drinking even before I stopped drinking. Yeah, like, stopped drinking. Or slowed down. Like, yeah, I didn't stop completely. Like, I still, like he said, like, I'll drink socially. Like, but I mean, sometimes I'll see, like, the bottle of Patron in my room and I'm like, I'll take a shot. Just random? (laughs) Yeah. Just one? See, that's, I wish, like, one. Like, if I look back on. Mm drinking it's just like i don't think i really ever enjoyed my buzz because i was just like as soon as i finished another one i had another one yeah, like, yeah, yeah. to where it's like i know when people smoke they smoke and they're just not <clears throat> like some people are not like blunt after blunt after blunt after blunt it's just like you smoke your blunt and then you're done yeah and then you're you calm, enjoy your you're, high yeah you're chilling yeah and then you hang out and you do whatever you need to do yeah to where it's drinking it was just like i'm sober I'm blacked out, just like that. Fuck. Mm. Yeah, but I don't like I don't like being like that. Yeah, but we'll um, we'll definitely, hopefully, not go back to those habits. Um. So since we have you here, Ruben, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, real <clears throat> talk, real actions. Yeah, I'll talk about the the brand. Um. So. Let's see, like, the brand's conception kind of started, like, way before we actually really started printing shirts. We, um, and myself, actually. So I had the idea, um, back in, like, I want to say, like, 2013, 2000, probably even before that, really. But it really, uh, I didn't print anything until about, like, yeah, 2014. And it was just kind of like, you know, I had this idea stuck in my head. And it kind of came from, like, oh, you remember uh, Fabulous? He used to have a, a album called Real Talk. And it, and I remember uh, that album, but I used to like, man, that's it was kind of catchy around that time, just the term, the, the phrase, real talk. Oh yeah. Yeah, and so then I always used to think about like you know how you know to tie it together to something you know more meaningful and everything. So you know I thought real talk, real actions was kind of you know it was kind of dope because um, we could talk about a bunch of cool shit and like that's what I like, that's what we're doing. We're gonna man, that's why I enjoy like having conversations with people, talking about like meaningful things like real issues and then but if we're talking about like ideas and stuff like that which i'm big on i like talking about like different like ideas and concepts that you know we could make happen and you know i thought well it's it's all good but unless you like take action and it's not really you know any, any it's not benefiting anybody yeah so i, I made a prototype shirt um just kind of getting some feedback and you know, a couple of the homies were like, yeah, it's just dope, you know, and then I should just wear it to parties and stuff like that, and people were, like, feeling it, so then I, I started working on actual designs, because this one was just, like, a concept of my head, and went down to the swap meet and told the dude, like, he typed it up, like, yeah. and, like, he printed it out, and and then I, I was like, you know what, so I bought an iPad, and I started, like, making designs, and then, so then I printed out one of my actual own designs, and then it was still, like, not a brand or nothing like that, and it was just getting feedback, and everybody's like, that's just dope just dope and then um so then years went by and so like last year was just like you know fuck i need to take action so i was kind of scared i guess i was like thinking my idea would get like taken so i was like so i did like a poor man's copyright for the logo and everything and then um for the name and then then i just saved up and i spent the actual i spent like a thousand bucks to actually get it like trademarked and everything like that so i feel like maybe my fear of like kind of getting it stolen kind of like delayed probably, it. yeah delayed it for sure because but well, which in actuality i should have just did it in the first place because you really have to kind of build up some uh brand value and it for anybody to want to take it anyways right like like if i'm gonna make yeah. it it's not like you know saying, like, yeah yeah, yeah. Like, oh, I, was just I never i never <laughs> saw it that way yeah so so once i started looking at it like that i was like well shit nobody's gonna want to take something that's that's not even anything yet so so then we started um so a couple of my close buddies we my brothers like we they're they're down with the vision i was like look we could create something cool and um so we form formulated the actual uh, the corporation and we started that and then uh yeah and then we started actually printing on a on a bigger level and then getting them out and so we're pretty much under our, like closing out our first full year actually of the corporation it's a lot of ups and downs a lot of learning but uh 
um, our whole brand is, you know, we want to inspire people, you know, to make these connections and speak your truth and, you know, take action when you have those opportunities to do so. And uh, so far, I mean, I feel like we've, we're doing that and, and what like we're taking action in on like in our community. And it's 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 kind of it's, it's good, man. It feels good, like kind of getting all this good feedback. People seeing us doing stuff because um, yeah. uh, we when we started, we wanted all right, we wanted to add value to people, you know, so we were like, hey, whatever we sell, we want to donate 10 percent back to the community. And so pretty much we were like. We didn't have like a set way on like how we're gonna get this money back. We we're like we're gonna do something though. So, but we've done like probably like a handful of different things. Like so, every month we're trying to take whatever we're selling and give that that portion back. But now it's kind of it's kind of spiraling into like we might even just convert to a. That's where we're at right now. We're like, should we convert into an actual nonprofit? Because they're working on a lot of ideas that could like uh you know inspire some actually permanent change within the community so mm -hmm. you know so coming from san Bernardino, like where that's where all of uh all of us are from like um all the founders of the brand you know it's you know it's got a, a bad rap you know san mm -hmm. Bernardino. so but to me it looks like it's like a challenge you know it's like hey if anybody's gonna change this like the people here are gonna change it so and we've been getting contact by doing what we've been doing lately like um with a lot of good people and a lot of people want to do the same thing so Although it does have that bad rap, there is a lot of good people in San Bernardino that want to, like, you know, change it. So, so you know, getting this brand going and everything has kind of been, like, man, it's been putting me in these places that I've been wanting to be. So, it's all happening. Um, still a lot of learning. So we're still not where we want to be by yeah. any means. But it's, a, yeah. it's like, a, you know, pay homage to Nipsey. It's a, it's a marathon. <laughs> it's yeah, a marathon, really. Definitely, yeah. Rest in peace. Um, I don't know. Rest in peace, Nipsey. Um, I don't know if you remember, but I think I might have been one of the first people you ever spoke to about your idea. Um, yeah, yeah, back in um, Converse, right? Yeah, like, yeah. and I swear it was around that time, like, because it must have been a while before, from the time that you mentioned it to the time that you actually did something to it, because I remember you talking about it, and... Yeah. Yeah, I remember telling you. I remember that conversation. We were talking about it. Yeah. And so, like, I remember like not hearing anything from it, and but I remember like feeling your passion for it. So yeah, yeah. when I didn't hear anything no more, I was just kind of like, wow, like that was a good idea. Like it sounded like he was sold on it. I was even sold on yeah, it. Yeah. And I think that I was. I think a... like maybe like a year might have passed by, and then I remember you got your iPad, and then you were showing me all your designs because I remember specifically the main logo yeah, yeah and i think it had like diamonds and a dollar sign on it and like yeah, stuff between yeah. like the little yeah 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 so i remember that and so like i remember when i saw that i was like oh like that's like that's badass that like, you're actually now like i yeah. you visualized it yeah and so there's a visual to it and i think that's like maybe that's the part like because I, I know what you're saying, like, you feel like your idea is going to get stolen, because I feel like that all the time. I feel like the FBI is always constantly watching me, and <laughs> everything I say is, like, somebody else pops up with it, and I'll tag, like, Eric on it, like, see, like, I'm not crazy, like, this is really happening, yeah. so, but like you said, too, like, there's, if nobody really sees value in it, like, yeah. and you don't do nothing with it, then it's you know what i mean like you're just wasting time yeah yeah and so when you actually start doing something with it what real talk real actions meant to me was like when people say if you could talk the talk then you should be able to walk the walk exactly yeah and a lot of people can speak on stuff but not everybody could follow through and accomplish the stuff that they speak on because like you said it's easy to to say all of this yeah, stuff yeah. and and get people to be on board but then like that's a lot of the times that's where it stops yeah no definitely i i agree with that and i feel like i feel that pressure on myself like big time because of what the brand's meaning is is that it's like you could talk about it but it's like you have to take action so i'm more conscious than ever of like what i'm saying because i know like in the back of my head it's like yo i'm not doing my brand a service if i'm not you know following through on my on my on my words you know i gotta yeah. take i gotta take action so like there's a lot of stuff that you know like imagine if we all did what we said we were gonna do like we would fucking mm -hmm. do a gang shit yeah but that's what the brand i feel like it's there for to kind of put that pressure on you because like you know like in the back of your head like when you say you're gonna do something and so 
and not just for anybody else to like oh look see i told you i was gonna do it but it's for yourself too really you have to take action but going back to like that that whole mentality of like kind of wanting to like uh you know not get your brand stolen and everything like that that's kind of like what i was saying where i was at was in that probably that year stage where i was like uh, i don't know like you know but you know I, I came to the realization that that was all a part of my mentality which was uh it was pretty much being scarce having that scarcity mentality so try to shift that to like having this uh abundance mentality like yeah like we could have everything we want we could do anything we want like we just got to want it bad enough and also not just want it but like kind of like take the steps put it write it down like yeah. put it put an action plan together you know and get, yeah. some, get some stuff going but yeah. same so, here i mean it took us three years to get this going i know i remember i remember you were telling me about it too i remember uh you said uh, initially you wanted to do like like a music cooking podcast yeah. like you wanted to cook and yeah. stuff i was like hey that'll be dope you still can though because like you have the, the platform now and then man like yeah, yeah. The possibilities are endless like yeah, right exactly. now um you know luckily like i was scared to do it especially by myself yeah but then eric always seems to like if if it's a good idea, Eric will be like, "All right, let's do it," you know. And whenever when he jumped um on the train this time, I was like, "All right, it's time," because for a while it was just an idea, and maybe it, like you said, like at first I was just scared, like you know, what if like I'm wasting my time, people are not gonna watch me, or like people are just gonna look at me like, "Oh, this was an idiot," you know, like. And the internet's a very negative place, so I was just like, "Man, like this is I don't know," but then. Like, I created the logo, and I felt visually, I was like, man, this is good. Like, I like it. Now I can visually see it. Yeah, yeah. But then still, that's where it kind of was like, that. that got that fear again, you know? And this time around, I was like, all right, I have to do it because, like, we were talking about um, that Logic song. You know what I mean? I don't want to, like, yeah, I was, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm, I, I suffer from depression and anxiety, and... Um, I wasn't doing anything for a while. After I stopped rapping, I fell into that, into like this big old depression. And so I needed something to pretty much keep my mind occupied, build myself up. And part of this was like, you know what? Like the way I'm going to get this off the floor and Eric joining me is I'm going to start interviewing <coughs> like the people that I know are on the same train as I am. People that have something going for themselves or want to better themselves and have something that that makes you like want to express yourself right you right, know right. and that's how I st um you know what i mean i was like once the ball gets rolling do the ball gets rolling yeah right? yeah no definitely and i i look at you guys instagram all the time and i see all the projects you guys been doing like i even seen you guys did a collaboration with uh San Bernardino, we are change. Is that what? The yeah, yeah. So actually, um, we've been doing a lot with them uh, since about like going on a year now too. Um, that was kind of just uh, you know cleaning up. Uh, but what that did for us is kind of more or less raise awareness about our brand, but also um, for me, the most important thing I feel like was getting us in contact with the right people, like getting us in contact with people that care. So now. For our bigger, our bigger plan, this thing that I've been working on, to me, it's like my biggest, my life's biggest ambition is like now I'm putting the pieces together. Like I got people that like actually care and that, that want to do good stuff in the community. But that project is, is, uh, it's going to be daunting. It's like a, it's a big deal. <laughs> yeah. And not, not only have you been doing stuff in your community, you've also did like some, lifestyle changes right to oh yeah even better <clears throat> your impact on not even yourself or in the world even your family yeah definitely um i'm like food wise big big um change i mean i've tried it before but then um like meaning like i've tried like cutting out like all meat and dairy um in the past and i did it um and i've seen i've seen results i've seen results in my body seen results in the way i'm thinking just the way i feel like um, and then I fell off and then I, f I went back to my old habits and I started feeling like, you know, feeling the depression, feeling these just these weird different types of thoughts, feeling like my body feel like feel like shit. And like so 
I, I seen it. I was like, okay, I seen what it feels like to be healthy and feel like to be healthy. And then on the, on the opposite side, like what it feels like to be unhealthy. So then after, you know, probably been like, uh, like seven months now since I've been like pretty much just, just back on it, just eating. I'm trying to just be 100% like, uh, like raw plant-based, like, but I still do eat like, uh, I don't eat meat, but I'll eat like some processed, like, um, like uh, alternative meats and stuff like that. Okay. But it's not like plants. But like I'm trying to be a hundred percent plant based. But for the most part, I've been. I feel like I'm like the. Hi baby. Um, been in the best uh, shape of my life. For the most part. That's good. When I seen you uh, coming through the door, I was like, you look noticeably slimmer than. Yeah, dude, I lost like since I went back on it. I lost like about like thirty three pounds. So I was like at 193, and I'm like at, I was like the most I weighed on like that. And then now I'm like at, probably even less, I'm like at 160 right now, so. Dang. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Sorry about this. No worries. No, it's okay. Oh, my. We all have, well, Eric doesn't have kids that you know of. <laughs> <laughs> he knows of. Yeah. Eric I, might have Plenty of love childs in the area that he probably doesn't claim. Okay, here. That's why I don't do any of that 23 in me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, this person has come up 50% <laughs> with yeah. your DNA. The craziest thing about 23 in me is that whole, like, they've been finding serial killers through that stuff. That's the crazy part. I need to do it for, for myself, too. Yeah, find out. I, I don't know if I... I don't have any kids out there, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Um, but, uh, you know, maybe, like, some relatives. You know, mm. I don't know. I don't know my biological father, so I'm like, mm. man, I'm kind of, ir- like, interested. But at the same time, I got a lot of going on right now, so I'm not... I'm not trying to throw something yeah, else into yeah, the mix. Exactly. And that's, like, a big wrench, too. Like, yeah. if, if you throw that, that might... You might find yourself... Um, totally involved in that for a while which is i guess finding you know what i mean your roots and where you came from might also you know what i mean like open other doors that you didn't know about you yeah know, yeah no definitely i think about that for sure like wanting to find out but i think in the right time you know the right time i will yeah can you imagine if uh, Ruben does a 23 me finds out he's, like, related to a serial killer? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm already <laughs> Girl, like, I already, I think I already, yeah. Got some crazy family members. <laughs> You're like, shout out to Ruben. They're not crazy. secret. <laughs> it's not a secret. <laughs> That's funny. Um, Lisa said, oh, by the way, shout out to Lisa. She's our yeah, uh, production assistant today. Production assistant for the day. <laughs> Um, I thought Soul resigned, but um, I guess our fingers are still crossed for that moment. <laughs> Just kidding, Soul, if he even watches. Um, Lisa's theory of why San Bernardino is so crazy is because Penton Hospital is in the area. Hmm. And what they do is after, they're like, after their insurance doesn't like cover the cost no more, they just throw them out into the city. Well, Penton's not just like a mental hospital. It's like a mental... like like uh like prison kind of it's like so it's like a, a jail for crazy people so oh is it yeah oh. so it's not so like, it's like arkham asylum pretty much oh. the closest thing that the closest yeah. thing we have to that yeah so it's like it's See, not, it's not necessarily not about the insurance it's more about like they're they're, they're there on oh like so they're they're there there they committed a crime and then they're saying oh i'm crazy so they or they are actually crazy or and that's where they go yeah they oh, go there that's crazy now I'm scared. Now I have this fear that Joker will be released into the city, not or a Joker of San Bernardino. <laughs> I see all sorts of crazy stuff. Yeah, I have seen some like lady in a full body fishnet suit. Well, That's it. Oh, no and, other. Let me say baseline. Yes, and baseline and water. <laughs> water baseline and water. Because that's we, I used to stay in yeah. the. I call it the heart and soul of the Dino is right there, and that's where you'll see all sorts of crazy people, dude. It's crazy. And so this lady must have been like she was hefty. She was a big lady, just in a full body fishnet suit, it's whatever. Hot out there. <laughs> it, was, it was a hot day. You're like in December. I mean, do you haven't done that? <laughs> no, I haven't done that. I almost stopped and like interviewed her. I, I wanted to do something like that too. Actually, um, uh, John Anthony tell, was telling me about that. Uh huh. 
uh, about their system. I forgot exactly the channel he was on telling me about how they're like this uh, project where they're interviewing like homeless people. Mm-hmm. I thought it was pretty cool just to kind of find the backstory because I think a lot of people want to like kind of help, but they don't like want to like hey give something out and but without trying to create that connection and really yeah. find out like trying to get to the root source and yeah. see if there's anything that she could really do to help them and stuff like yeah. that. That's so. what I wanted to talk to them and like sometimes I have like random shoes in my car that I could give out. Oh yeah. But then you know what I mean like I want to like bring it like you said like build a connection or build something. a connection and like kind of like build show their down. story to like my friends and family. But then the internet's a mean place, and if it, that stuff goes viral, I'll put them in a situation that they don't deserve to be because their life is already I mean, there's bad a lot of, as there, it is. I would there's, say there's some people doing it already in San Bernardino. Um, there's this podcast uh, I just heard it the other day, and there's some guys um, um, where they pretty much did the same concept. They offered uh, to buy the guy some a lunch and um, give him some money if he could do this. Do this, um, the whole like backstory um, be- of his life, pretty much, and kind yeah. of how he got there. I mean, it seemed pretty cool. I mean, it just didn't lead to anything. It was just all right, cool, man. Like, thanks for sharing your story and everything like yeah. that. It was like, damn. But I think there's something there that could come out of that. Like, yeah, somebody, that- yeah, like you said, somebody has to find where it could lead to. Yeah. Because for the moment, yeah, you help them, but that's kind of like. That's that help might not it will probably only last them the moment that you were there with them. Yeah, you know? and I and I get you on like the whole like the internet's a fucked up place sometimes because they you know people want to jump in and criticize especially it's like the ones that ain't doing shit. Um, mm-hmm. so like but then there are people that are doing stuff that still won't see eye to eye because like uh, recently, um, you know I did this uh, um, like partner not like a partnership I, ju- I just joined with some uh some friends that um from the rotary um it's called sunset rotary they do a lot of cool stuff in the community mm-hmm. and uh you know they wanted to feed some homeless people down on uh like what was it like ninth and east street or one of those streets right there. there's a park right there and i've i've already i've done stuff at that park before on my own um and i was like you know what let's go so um we we bought food and like a lot of people donated food um so we and we cooked like burgers and hot dogs for them chips and everything and like like really like hooked it up and other people brought like pasta salad so we fed like over like a hundred like homeless people but it was it was but like we were getting feedback people like oh why are you doing that you know they're just gonna like it's not like you're you know it's like oh you know that old saying like you could teach a man to or like you could give them a fish or you could teach them how to fish type of scenario. Yeah. And so that's kind of essentially what we're doing. We're just giving them um, some food and it was a one time thing. But I, I got numbers. I was talking to them. I was building connections and like um, kind of let these people know. It's like, hey, yeah, we understand this is just a meal right now. But we more or less want to try to get to a root cause. But we were still getting feedback because... You know, some of these people, you know, like they're homeless, but they're like, you know, they're on drugs or they're alcohol. But there was also, I mean, and why people ask me why I do it, because, you know, they, they look at it like it's not really benefiting in the long term. But there were so many kids that, were, that we fed too that their parents were like, like drug addicts. And you could just see it like and these kids were just like filthy. And it's just like, damn, the shoes are beat up and giving food to them and kind of letting them see that. Yo, there's people out here that care, you know, maybe, you know, it's, it's, it's sometimes it's like who's watching you too, you know, they see that there's good people and, you know, they could be that too. They could be that change. So they want to see, and at least if we just did it for them, then it, it was worth it. But, you know, and I feel like if you have the capacity to do anything good and positive, like it's your responsibility to do so because especially on the internet there's so much people want to post everything negative yeah and then when you have something positive you feel like i don't want to post it because of those negative people it's like oh you don't want to deal with it but i mean i feel like that's our responsibility really yeah because it's like so much it's like there's more negative and we need to see more positive yeah some, some people even will bash and be like oh you're just doing it to feed your ego trying to feed homeless people and it's like Dude, it's not even about that. It's more about And that's just helping. those thoughts I learned are just a self reflection of them. Oh yeah, definitely. Because if they feel that way it's because that's the reason why they would do something good. Exactly. Um and for me like that's exactly true. Like on anything, like the reason like I feel like yeah, I, in my head like it's weird. I do this weird shit all the time now. Like I see people in my head, I say I love you. 
in my head because I love myself and I lo- I have to love everybody and that's why I put out. So when people like you know you don't want to hate, it's like they're not really hating me; they hate themselves. Yeah. So and they're all we're all a reflection of each other in some way, you know. Yeah. Um. One thing that really made a big impact on me is uh, learning the expression control what you can control and you can con- only control yourself yeah so um those are definitely words i try to live by now because part of my depression was like i couldn't like get people to like me or like like what i was doing or you know what i mean not that i wanted attention but i guess i wanted some sort of self-validation for what i was doing and being able you know what i mean i felt like oh if people like me then i might be able to achieve my goals and dreams and stuff but then one thing we've been finding out is like people like a lot of people will watch our stuff but not like it so it's like what was the thing you were telling me about Fuck. <laughs> um it was something about like your you know what i mean like the people that don't want to succeed are the people watching you but don't you know what i mean leave their footprint that they were there but they were definitely yeah, you know I mean they they're they're taking notice. They're the ones taking notice, and the people who do want to see you succeed are the ones. You know what I mean? Hand the like button. So weird. I uh, like even on like my personal page, I have some people that like <laughs> like they they don't like me, but they'll watch my stories. Or they watch <laughs> yeah. Them. Like it's so weird. Like <laughs> like or like I got somebody that like likes my pictures. I don't I don't deal with them or nothing. I'm, I'm not I'm not a hater. I don't I'm not beefing with them or nothing. But it's like dudes on my profile like liking my stuff but it's like i know this dude talks shit behind my back because i've heard it like other people they yeah say, i'll see him won't say shit like won't say nothing to me i'll like look him in his eyes shake his hand and she's like hey like it's like it's your opportunity yeah <laughs> yeah nothing but it's weird yeah yeah i mean it's Some like weird stuff like that but that that's how you're saying like they're in the internet's like a weird place sometimes but you know, I think uh, as long as uh, we keep doing like what we're supposed to be doing, like as yeah, you know, then people, we're good. the people, the right people who appreciate what you're doing will come along, and in the end, that's all that matters. That you surround yourself with people who think like you do, and everybody else, dude. It's like it's just a self reflection of who they are and who they choose to be, and um, when they get a reaction out of you, they win. And if you yeah. just ignore them and you keep doing what you're doing and you know, um, you're you're going through your milestones, and you finally get to your destination. A lot of these people, dude, they just work to work. They're just living to live. You know, they don't really have a purpose, and they see somebody who does, and that makes them upset because they don't know how. Yeah, I to think, you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah, Even, I think you're on point with that, and I feel like my challenge is like trying to. Um, I'm not. I I can't change anybody. Um, nobody could change anybody, but if I could lay out some thoughts and make people think and, you know, I feel like I've had swayed people's ideas and opinions on just on pretty much on questioning like their own stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, you just gotta be willing to question everything as far as like your own, uh, your own core beliefs. Like, do you believe it because you believe like, because you took your time and you like formulated your own opinion based on that? Or is it just like some information that's been handed down? It's like that, you're supposed to just roll it, you know. Yeah. But I mean, that's good, dude. Um, one of the sh- your shirts that uh, really spoke to me is the one Eric's wearing right now. Yeah. Go ahead and show that one to the camera. Yeah. It says "Never give up on, your, on life. your life's greatest ambition." That right there spoke to me. Yeah. Um, and that's you know what I mean. That's I've never had any shirt speak to me like, and that one like. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of like the like the basis for our brand like we don't want to just have like other than like this shirt like it's our icon shirt so just to kind of put our logo out there but like all of our shirts we want to have like some type of meaning attached to it like, yeah. like the one you want says, yeah so the golden rule so the golden rule is you know that one pretty much sat with me the longest like i i always felt like you know i wanted to um and i, I learned that as from a kid you know Treat people how you want to be treated, and that's the golden rule. Oh, that's, that's the golden rule. Okay. It's a it's a universal law of okay. reciprocity. So you could like you learn it in you know in school, you learn it in like religion. They teach about that too. It's just pretty much treating people how you want to be treated, you know. And if you're doing that, like you know how we we're just talking about reflection of self, mm-hmm. then you know you're good. And for the ambition shirt, yeah, no that that um that shirt was 
you know, like I'll tell you the inspiration from that. You like um, Immortal Technique? Yeah, I've heard him. So, yeah. so he has like this song, um, uh, "Leaving the Past," and there's a part in there, and he's like, he's like, "Hell's not a place that you go to if you're not a Christian. It's the failure of your life's greatest ambition." Mm. And then, and so that always stuck with me. So that's where I got like your life's greatest ambition. Uh, but so I just added never give up on your life's greatest ambition just to make it like tie it tie it together because if you have something that you that you can't stop thinking about it's like it's your responsibility to the world to everybody to yourself to like not give up on it because there's like how you said so much people are out there that are just working just to work and check to check but nobody's really going for what they really want to yeah you know so you know, like we got a lot of good feedback that was probably like the most positive feedback that we have on that shirt just because it could tie to everybody's own personal agenda what is your ambition what is the biggest thing that you could think that you could ever you know accomplish work on that you know and that's kind of what it's got me to that's why I like the brand was never my biggest thing and i always knew i wanted to you know create some type of positive change that like felt throughout the world and um i feel like i'm working and what i'm working on right now is like it's, it's gonna happen so that's why i said i might we might switch our, our brand to like a non-profit because of this or we might just like leave it like you know like a, a, re a standard brand but our contributions are going to go to this nonprofit that we're creating yeah, right now. Yeah. So I'm working out all the details on that, but that is. Yeah, man. You never know where life's going to take you. Like, never did I think that me and I are going to going to start podcasting. You yeah. Know what I'm <laughs> but you, you know what I mean. You you tread your path and you learn things, and then like you said, like once you have an ambition, it's hard to get rid of it. Even if yeah. Even if you stop trying to do it, like it. It's there. It's there, and it's unsettling because yeah. it wants you to yeah. move and yeah. do something about it and look we're all here we all you yeah. know what i mean <laughs> everybody who's watching please chase your dreams <laughs> exactly it's worth it we only got one life to live and exactly it's very sad to just sit there on your couch yeah waiting for friday to come again yeah you know and um you know what i hear this from uh gary v was talking about this and um he was saying like uh you know he was he was like giving a suggestion like go speak to like the like elderly people like they're in like you know convalescent homes or old people homes or whatnot like that and he's like when you talk to them he's like you'll find out that they are are more talking about like the things that they regretted not doing than mm -hmm. the things that they did you know too, too many times in life we play it safe and we're not like taking these chances taking these risks you know to see if our ideas are, are you know are actually good you know and we're just gonna put it on the back burner but you know, that's kind of something that stuck with me. It's like, yeah, I don't want to be that. I want to be the one that's telling these crazy stories at the end when I'm old, you know. Yeah, that's like, the, hey, you know? Yeah, same here. I mean, yeah, I never made it in the rap career, but did we perform in front of sold out stages? Yeah, yes. yeah exactly. <laughs> and we can speak on that. Yeah, that was like fun. When you're old, would you rather talk about your regrets or your failures? Because your failures, at least you got good stories. Yeah, there. exactly. Like, hey, fuck it, we did it. Yeah, yeah, I, opened that was up, dope. I opened up for the game and like, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Like... I went from performing at a karaoke bar to like five people to going out and performing in front of a sold out concert for the game. Like, it's like an epic. And we, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. even Eric helped me one time, and we were at the Novu in LA, and and we performed like to like three hundred some people there. And Eric like just knew my songs, and I needed someone to back me up. So I was like, Eric, you down? He's like, All right. <laughs> <laughs> and now like Eric can be like, One day I just, you know what I mean? Like. I was oh, up yeah, there I was on that stage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, if we didn't, you know what I mean? If we didn't even try that, what would we have done, Eric? Like, sit home and drink. And yeah, yeah. There's times where, like, we didn't even know what to do with ourselves. Like, what did we do today? Like, we've already done everything. Like, yeah, yeah. What, oh, now we're just picking different spots. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, do yeah. the same thing that we would do at another spot. Like, yeah, yeah. No, that's dope. No, yeah. So, um, tell the people uh, where you can find your brand. Uh, so, right now, you guys could, um, find us uh, uh real talk reactions that's our handle for pretty much everything our website is down right now we're gonna get it uh relaunched and uh, get a whole new um whole new feel for it, a whole new atmosphere for it we're gonna yeah. try to have it all uh pretty much all our group projects all the things that we're gonna be able to do and um how people because we've been getting a lot of people that 
sometimes they don't even want to buy nothing but they want to help out with whatever we're doing mm-hmm. which to mm-hmm. me is cool it's like hey yeah you know support anyway uh, that's cool so uh the 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 website's still gonna be the same as before real talk reactions dot com um uh, but so right now if anybody wants anything just dm me uh, my personal uh instagram is uh ruben g nine nine eighty nine um or just um, on real talk reactions i'm on there too so you guys could uh dm us if you guys want anything um but yeah that's where you can find us for right now until our website's back up and running what shirts do you have in stock right now uh we have we have the ambition we have the golden rule the icon shirt just pretty much uh i got like smalls left um i have have the burn the ships i have a few left of the 909 emoji hats they're pretty cool. I like this one ever yeah. since I saw you yeah. post it up. Yeah, they're already knocking it off at the uh, the swap meets. Oh, but no way. I, I predicted it like when we made it. I was like, dude, this is so... F- it's like, why hasn't anybody <laughs> done this yet? So we are like, yeah, they're going to knock them off. So we sold out like right away when we f- did the first batch. And then uh-huh. the second batch, it's kind of slow. I still have some. Um, but uh, yeah, no, they, I already seen somebody with them at the, the swap meet. But uh-huh. if you see them... Uh, the originals have our icon logo on the side, so like uh, you can see it right here. But uh, no, nah, yeah. Everything else is a blatant yeah, and then knockoff. Uh, yeah, but and that's I'm, good. What is it? Uh, imitation is the greatest form of flattery. Yeah, exactly. So, so you're definitely going in the right direction. Yeah, exactly. I was I wasn't mad about it too. It was it was all good. It's all love. Like you saw it coming. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it it's bound to happen. Even yeah. even um even if your brand explodes there's gonna be yeah yeah they're, so they're if it's probably... happening at this level it's definitely about <laughs> yeah, to yeah. happen at a greater level yeah yeah and so if, if it does get to that level i mean there's gonna be a bunch of distinctions that we make with our brand that's yeah. gonna you know be different you know than a uh, regular knockoff that you can't imitate but uh yeah um okay cool so everybody if you guys uh yeah, these are some good quality shirts they are <laughs> they are dude yeah, yeah. just because i outgrew my burn the ships one but Lisa's rocking one, but she's yeah. pregnant and she doesn't want to be seen on the show. She's like, wait a minute. <laughs> okay, so on to the downright scary. No. Inspired by Ruben's <laughs> raw lifestyle, <laughs> we are going to be eating durian today. The world's stinkiest food. Fruit. Yes. <laughs> the only thing I feel bad for is um hopefully it airs out the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Which is your house. <laughs> and we can't open the windows because I hear a lot more outside. <laughs> oh man. Well, and- all right, Lisa. I think we're ready for the durian challenge. Anybody like do research on it? No. No. Never even <laughs> heard of it prior Never? to getting it. I know there's like thousands of fruits out there, so I'm not bad. Like I'm not sad at myself for not knowing this. And since it is a smelly fruit, it doesn't seem like it's that popular. It's well, I mean, it's popular <laughs> for YouTube purposes, but oh, okay. people like Southeast Asians are the ones who like them. Mm-hmm. Shout out to the Southeast Asian community. No. Either you love it or you hate it. Oh, love it or hate it. Oh, okay. I know I'm going to hate it. <laughs> it's like banned on airplanes, right? Oh, yeah. Airports. Mm. Airports? Yeah, oh, okay. dude. It's banned. It's like... Oof. It's... Uh, I don't so know. So, does this... Uh, is this like canned or is it oh, fresh? No, or it's fresh. Fresh? It's okay. Fresh. It's Wanna fresh. Want to shout out the, you, the people that have Let's been on see. the stream? Who's... Oh, let me shout... Oh. Shout out to my mom. I don't know if she's still watching. Shout out to... Um, Saul sounds like he looked. Um, shout out to my sister in law Alex. Shout out to my brother in law Alex. Shout out to Escardo, which he's gonna be a guest on next week's episode. Oh, Escardo! Yeah, so that one's definitely gonna be crazy. <laughs> what's uh, what's uh, <laughs> I want to know the scoop on that episode. <laughs> oh man, dude. Um, well, if they don't watch it. We're gonna eat. Are we, I think we're gonna go on this whole like Asian cuisine thing. This is what it seems like. Oh we're gonna wait, eat, I forgot about. We're gonna eat balut. Never heard. You don't know what that no. is? That's uh, it's like a duck fetus. Oh yeah, you know what? I have heard that. Um, yeah. cause you know Leo. At oh Convert, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he. Shout out to Leo. Yeah, he's trying to get everybody on those. I remember back in the day at Converse. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think she's going to bring it over here and cut it over oh. here. Are you going to cut it over there, Lisa? Yeah, that's 
Oh, okay. Oh, I don't like this. It's terrible. There's people watching. Let's see if... Uh, I'm going to wave it to everybody. Yeah, dude, this is... They say just the smell alone is killer. Yeah, I think it looks like a jackfruit. Yeah, it does. It does. It looks like if that's yeah, uh, when we went to go buy it. Like I saw it and it was jackfruit. Like this is like if you go to the Asian store and you ask for it, they'll look at you strange. Like no, you want this? <laughs> like are you sure? No, you got a YouTube. <laughs> you got a YouTube <laughs> right? <laughs> oh yeah, man. We've done uh, the spicy noodle challenge. No. That was like kind of like our pilot pilot episode. We did the spicy noodle oh, challenge. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Oh, that was terrible. Why it was too spicy? I didn't. Oh yeah, yeah, dude. I don't. People really eat that like to eat. Just like to my brother in law, he does the spicy noodle challenge. It's not even a challenge. He eats it for dinner, like, and he puts um, sriracha on it, habaneros, like Damn. a bunch of hot sauce, dude, on top of something that's already like super super spicy, like. It makes no sense. Damn. Um, we recently did a Gushers challenge with him. And the reason why I called it a spicy Gushers challenge was I got the bomb insanity hot sauce and I got a habanero and I injected the habanero with the bomb insanity in it. So just so, have you ever eaten a habanero alone? Nah. Oh, dude, it's so it's spicy. Like it's like it's like. Have you seen like people just eat peppers? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. you really have to love eating spicy foods to be like e eating a pepper with your food. Yeah, if yeah. you ate it by yourself, like you would be like asking for milk or whatever to extinguish it. So now imagine adding like one of the world's most hottest hot sauce into it. Fuck. Damn. But he I didn't get a reaction out of him. He, he said it? no, he ate it. Damn. Dude, I was like trying to like tell him about the rules, he snatched it out of my hand and ate it. Damn. Yeah, I was like, wow, like... I like spicy food, too, um, but definitely, I'm not, like, I'm not, like, immune to the shit. Yeah, <laughs> like, me neither. Like, I'll, I'll break out, like, start tears coming down and everything. The way that my body works is everything's spicy to me. So, like, I'll be enchilado, like, with tapatio the same way I would be with whatever, like... With like a Carolina Reaper pepper. The only thing that changes is like my face will get like super itchy. Fuck. Which people have been telling me might be like an allergic reaction. But I mean, I don't have trouble breathing. It's just like. Get off. I can just feel my pores open up. Like, it's like as soon as like the heat hits, like all my pores just open up. <laughs> and I think that's what makes my face itchy. But, um, like after like a lot of milk, I'm pretty okay. Yeah. We have this thing too called um we call it dragon's ass and that's like whatever happens to you the next day when you go to the restroom. Well like, that's like the worst part, huh? Like fuck. Yeah. It's, <laughs> that's why I always say the Buffalo Wild Wings uh challenge, the blazing challenge, it's oh, like yeah. a two part challenge. Oh yeah. Huh? <laughs> Can you handle it on the way out? <laughs> that's the worst part, dude, because I don't know if you're uh your colon's like made to withstand something like that. For real, um, you're making me nervous. I don't smell a thing. <laughs> I know I don't want to smell it. All right, you guys ready? Ugh. Here, Eric. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Not that bad. Smell it. I smell worse. Or is it smell from outside? Hold on. It actually smells like jackfruit from right here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, I don't like this. You already tried it? No, but I can. I don't like the smell. trying new things, <laughs> anyways. I'll try anything once. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, how are we doing this? Do we have to finish it? It's, up to you. it's like, your show. Why do you keep asking us for the rules? You're the, the one that makes the rules. Are you, okay, <laughs> let, we're gonna do a smell test. Let's do a smell test. It's not that bad. Oh no, dude, this is like jackfruit. Mm. It's just a little bit slimy <laughs> than the bowl. Does Birdo need a bucket this time? I don't know. It shouldn't be that bad. It's not going to taste nasty. It tastes good. Are you oh. smelling it? You yeah. It's like nature's ice cream. Oh, you're already trying it? It's like a custard. 
She said it's not that bad. <laughs> it's not. See? Oh. I'm just scared of the texture. Like the texture always gets me in foods. Like yeah, if it looks like slimy <laughs> and stuff. It's yeah. like a custard. It's kind of milky. You keep saying yeah. custard, and I'm That's gonna like, like say like I don't know what that is. Oh, if you keep going back for it, it must not be that bad. This is good. <laughs> How is it, Eric? It's okay. I'm not gonna cry about it like you. Hate you, Eric. Somebody's gotta cry about it. <laughs> All right. Well, he like textures too. Like, yeah, I hate textures. Mm-hmm. Do it. <laughs> is it not good? <laughs> This is like this is like matrix pudding. Mm, like, yeah, it's like pudding. <laughs> I might have taken more than I was comfortable with. <laughs> I think I'm liking this too much. Okay, okay one, like I'm it's not even a again. challenge for you. I know you're over here. Like, <laughs> like can I have some more? <laughs> I'm taking the rest of it. Please, sir, might have some more. <laughs> can I have some more? There's two pieces right there. Uh, Do it, Bruno. More, more, please. <laughs> Well, at least, um, <laughs> okay, Eric? Yeah, it's too late for you, brother. You're going to gag. I thought about it too much. Because if it melts more, you're going to smell it more. <laughs> His face. <laughs> He's, like, right. concentrating. Oh, a little this. something right here. <laughs> oh, Bucket <God>. time. <laughs> My love. For the record, that was pretty delicious. Ugh. I felt insulted by. <coughs> wow. You just insulted half of the people in Southeast Asia that love this. A whole I'm entire fine. culture. I'm fine. He's fine. <laughs> uh, that did not sound fine. You'll be, you'll be fine. <laughs> you'll be fine. <coughs> okay. Yeah. It was not that bad. It wasn't. It was just more about like. Wait till it's not as like, frozen. Like when you yeah, that's what it. I was wondering. Like, if we would have let it sit at room temperature a little longer, it, it would have stunk up the house. Oh yeah. But you said I didn't want his house to stink. <laughs> oh well. Not for you, Eric. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Well, there you go, folks. If you want to try durian, freeze it first. Freeze, freeze it. it first, and it's, it's delicious. like ice cream. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't that bad, but. I could tell if you had it at room temperature, it would probably be awful. Yeah, you could smell it like like where. This is probably like the two elevens of fruit. The two elevens of fruit. <laughs> I kind of want to see what this smells like. Yeah. Because no. <laughs> two elevens, ice cold, aren't that bad. <laughs> warm, they're disgusting. <laughs> Any beer warm yeah. is kind of disgusting. All right. Can How do this? Germans drink warm beer? Eric, you finished it. No, not as much as him. I killed mine. I was gonna eat the seeds just to test it. <laughs> All right, can you take this out? Of my like I'll take the pit. I'm gonna grow some durian in my backyard. All right. Oh. Bro. So we got a we got a bonus challenge. Bonus challenge. So I didn't this... know about this. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so this bonus challenge. Um. Dang, Eric, you finished it? Oh man. All right. Props to you guys. Okay, this bonus challenge. Only two people are gonna probably uh, suffer. Okay, it's why'd a, you look at us? <laughs> it's like, it's like we're well, I mean, it could be any of us. Um, there's three ice creams, and um, they're green tea ice cream, uh-huh. which I heard is good for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but <coughs> Lisa infused two of the ice creams with wasabi. Oh shit! <laughs> so I mean I don't know. I didn't cheat, so All right. for whatever happens, happens. Challenge accepted. So I'm guessing it looks exactly like wasabi. Yes, it does. Dun, 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 dun. Oh. oh, there's four. Yeah, you told me to mix all. All three of might eat it, or just one. Oh, okay. So so we all might get so screwed. Oh, that's cool. I'm down food. with that. No, because then what if like. Only I get it. Like, you know? Just pick one. Yeah. <coughs> know There's only one good one. Were there utensils? There's only one good There's one? Two good ones. Can oh. we get can we get utensils? Yes. <coughs> so it's two good just ones. Shoot it. Ones. <laughs> so shoot just shoot it. Just just do it like oh, oysters. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you t- No, I didn't taste. I was about to. I was about to. I was like, wait, it's going to ruin the whole thing. <laughs> oh no, here Eric. You can have that one. 
mother. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, it's my first time having green tea ice cream. Yeah. Okay, so. Where that means you, Lisa, like, you gotta try one. Did you like? Know. Did you like buy this? I already did. Like you buy green tea ice cream? Yes. Can you at least tell us if it's pleasant or not? Oh my bad, I didn't even give you the spoon. No, I got it. <laughs> it was pleasant. I mean, like, how is it? Is it bad? Green tea. <laughs> that infused green tea ice cream. <laughs> oh oh shit! There, hold on, hold on. Are we, room smell, room? are we smelling it first? Oh, no, shit. you can't. Cause oh, if... fuck, I think I'm screwed. Otherwise, tell us the dead giveaway. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, are we doing the whole spoonful? Just do a spoonful. Just right one spoonful. Alright, here's go. Birdo's get... Watch that Birdo eat the spoonful. Here's nothing. <laughs> it's a spoonful, okay. Alright, All right. hold on. And... All at once, hold on. I'll count to three. I have a feeling Eric didn't get a good one. And I did. I have a feeling they're all in. Was that a spoonful? <laughs> Yeah, okay. Ready? One, One, two, two three, three, go. go. Yep, my shit is hot. Yes! <laughs> uh, mama, I made it! Oh. I guess mine is okay. <laughs> Let me try that one. <laughs> okay, that's the one, too. <clears throat> this is the a spicy one? There's three of them? There's two of them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bring some of that fruit back. Want <laughs> <laughs> a piece of the fruit? Mm. It's all good. Fuck. It was that bad? <laughs> I want to know what the spicy one tastes yeah. like. Yeah. Yeah, it's an experience. Oh, my. Oh, man. As soon as it hits your mouth, you're like, fuck. What did I do? I fucked up. I fucked up. <laughs> Oh man. Oh shit. You didn't even have it. Jeez. Why did I, I want to try it? <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Why did it sit? It's perfectly good and spicy. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I had to try it. <laughs> try anything once. Oh, oh man. I'm fucking dying. Uh, yep. Now I can uh. put that on my list of things to never try again. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay, we got panda cookies. Now I want to try it. I'm cool. I don't eat panda. No? Uh, we do have gum if you want gum. No, I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah. Now I want to try it. Which one's this um, one? Oh, man. It's like sitting <laughs> there. Oh, no, I don't want to try it now. No, like, I need to wash it's part of it. Huh? Like, it went to, like, the corner of my mouth, like, behind my teeth. So this is the bad one? Oh, my that one for sure is the bad one. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, just try a little bit, cause man. Mm, these are good. Uh, I could, I think I could see. Oh, I could see it. What? Oh my god. <laughs> oh my uh, god. Out a boy. <laughs> yeah. How is it catching all this? Turn off his mic. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The show definitely needs oh. its own like Birdo bucket. <laughs> yeah. We've oh. been talking about it for like the past two episodes. I don't know why we still don't have one. <laughs> oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to put it. Oh, <laughs> get some durian in it and have some more. Oh, it doesn't get any better, <laughs> dude. You spit it out. What the hell? <laughs> I know. Oh. It's not a pepper hot. It's not vinegar. It hurt your tummy. It's just like a like a, a shot. Yeah. Oh. Oh shit, dude. That was a bad idea. That was way worse than the durian. Okay. <sighs> oh, that was way worse than the durian. <laughs> oh, that yeah, durian was actually pretty good. Yeah. Oh. It was good, right? <sighs> I may not let it thaw out if I ever have some again, but yeah. as as like unfrozen as it was, it was good. How, how do uh, people like traditionally prepare that? Like, what do they make it with? Or... 
Well, we don't make it with anything. Just eat it? Yeah. Like that? Like an apple or a banana. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. But usually it's bigger, but we, we bought the little tiny one. <laughs> that was small? So they get big like, like, like jackfruit. Jack yeah, like that big, yeah. But that one's really expensive. And I ain't got money like that. <laughs> 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 the show budget isn't that big. <laughs> yeah, the show budget isn't that big for uh, <laughs> extra large or normal size uh, durians. Oh my god, well, what did we learn today, folks? Um, Bird the internet's, bucket, priority. The internet's a bad place. Sometimes. I mean, it's still <laughs> it's still good because, like, really, like, I've learned so much, and that's why, like, I feel like social media gets that, that negative rap, mm-hmm. but really, fuck, I learned so much, cause I've, but it's all predicated on, like, who you follow, right? Like, yeah, yeah. If you're following, like, people that are doing the stuff that you want to do, or, you know, kind of living the lifestyle, or kind of, you know, paving the way for you... <laughs> If you're just following like regular people, just doing nothing like with their yeah. lives, and yeah, and it, yeah, it's not really good. But man, I learned so much because without that, without like <clears throat> some of the you know the followers that I follow or people that I follow, like man, I my whole perception is is changed on on everything because I'll see something and it makes me question my own reality, and then it's yeah. like yo, I start digging in and start researching and start trying to. You know, finding out if whatever th- this this post is, if it's true or not. Yeah. You know, and man, I, I think there is a lot of good good to it, but at the same time, yeah, there is there is that it's like a, a gift and the curse. You know, you got to deal with that yeah. part. Yeah. The negative side of it, but I follow World Star. <laughs> I used to, but then I, I just kind of got tired of seeing like. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's uh, just like all random BS. Yeah, like you know. I need. I need to start following like podcasting shows to yeah. see like, like you, you follow uh, you follow Gary Vee? Nah, I follow oh, Theo Vaughn. Follow Gary Vee, dude. He's fucking. Oh yeah, I do. I do follow. I do follow him. I do follow Gary him. Vee. He's uh, he's he's like always like, kind of preaching that uh, people make fun of the youth, but he embraces the youth because the youth has like all this like these brand new ideas and stuff like that, and he's actually like. Stuff he said in the past still relates to now more than yeah. ever. Yeah, so yeah, that's why he's so he's so popular. Um, I do. I followed him for a long time because he yeah. just says some things that like yeah, he make some, you want to get up and do stuff. He has some pretty good audio books too. Yeah, ever I got them. Yeah, they ever want to check them out? I've been big on that too. Like as far as my whole like growth and everything, it's just <laughs> trying to commit myself to learning. Like so, I'm on like a new book every month. Okay. So I have like a pretty nice uh size like library on audible i'm always sharing it though like I always let people jump in get my password download books and then go in there so you could if you ever want man i'll shoot it to you guys too i got a bunch of books and i feel like it's, it's cool to kind of share information yeah, like that that's good. Mm-hmm. What is it? Um, sharing knowledge <clears throat> is wealth yeah um you know what we should be inspired eric and we should start trying to lose weight yes and we should make that <coughs> <coughs> Our first thing in, in clearing our our minds and like um, I believe what you said that if you eat a lot of junk food or you know what I mean stuff that probably makes you lethargic. Yeah, it, it affects you in nah, a big way. It, a lot, man. And there's, I mean, it's just because there's so much like chemicals in our food, so that's why it's like it's a lot easier to get um, it's to go to a, like a plant based diet because it's like you know what you're you're eating, you know, um, to an extent because I mean. If you're gro- you're going organic, you know they're not putting pesticides. But if you're still buying like just regular lettuce, you still kind of like eh. yeah. But that's kind of where like I want to take like my whole, the whole idea for the nonprofit. I have it set up so we're one- I have it broken down into quadrants on how we're gonna you know um you know um, incite some permanent change within the community. But I, I believe that that's a a big area. So in a nutshell, I want to like kind of create like a. Uh, like a large indoor like growing operation but for for food mm-hmm. you know not like for weed or nothing like that but for food um locally because we don't have anything like that yeah and that's a lot of people like uh it's like i got into the, like a debate recently somebody was like oh like like just because you're like eating plants and shit like that doesn't mean you're not contributing to the harm of other animals because mm-hmm. they're like oh well when they cut down like forest or whatever to plant and shit like that like you know animals get hurt you know doing that but it's like i'm not eating them animals and and it's not like it's an intentional thing and it's not like uh 
you know, you're perpetuating that that cycle. You know, it's like once you set up shop to grow and everything like that, you're you're set up. But the the difference of growing indoors, it's like you could control more. You're using a tenth of the water. You know, you you don't have to use pesticides. Yeah. You know, and it's more clockwork. And if you're using solar panels at some point, you know, you're in the green. It's like we're printing money. So I think uh, getting something like that on a larger scale here would appeal to a lot of local restaurants. They want to be able to promote like, you know, hey, we have the freshest ingredients picked today, you know, locally, you know, and kind of create a network of, you know, uh, of people that, you know, either want to contribute to that, like maybe get some smaller other grow ops going around. Yeah. But I think. Right now is the time. The technology is here. The solar panels. Kind of like in a more down. controlled environment of a farmer's market. Exactly. Yeah. And so I think uh, I think that's where it's headed right now. I have, I have this book. It's uh it's called the Abundance. The future is brighter than you think. And they talk about how uh, uh they talk about a lot of stuff. Pretty much the whole book. They're like talking about like all these doom and gloom concepts. Like how they're like and they pretty much go through one by one and debunk them all. Like how it's just the negative negativity sells you know so people want to like put this out there like oh we're, we're, we're fucked you know but really there's solutions you know for our problems but we just got to kind of be willing to kind of one find out find some information and kind of be willing to question you know these these theories and then so now like pretty much like i'm, I'm set on i want to do that like big yeah. time um is a part of that and it's not the only thing but i think that's kind of change the culture around here once we start um, creating our own dependence our own independence as far as food's concerned because most of our food's coming from like out the country like mm -hmm. traveling thousand miles away and it's you know it's not really the best quality of food neither so yeah i'm always sketched out about anything i leave in the fridge for more than a couple of days oh no uh oh what happened baby <laughs> she's okay she's well okay. i guess then um we would love to have you back on the show yeah yeah definitely okay. Seems like uh, we can take these conversations to even greater lengths. Um, you know, um, we still will get definitely get versed on more stuff like that. Um, but we got to start making changes now, Eric. Yes. Lay yeah. off the fat, the fast food. You're talking right now. You got to do that action now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> right. Yep. Exactly. Hey, I can yes. help you guys. I'm not. I'm no saint, but you know, if you ever want to reach out, I'll. Uh, you know. Yeah. Try to give you whatever I can, any info. Okay, well, um, Maya dictates that the show is over. Yeah, <laughs> she said it's a wrap. So, um, if anybody wants to follow us, um, Eric? Instagram, Fingers in the Batter. Twitter, FIDB Podcast. YouTube, Fingers in the Batter. Um, Facebook, Fingers in the Batter. Um, yeah. We'll have all the links below. All the links also to Ruben's. Uh, real talk, real action, and all that. All right, guys. Later. Nice. You made it to the end of the show. I guess it's easy to stick around when you don't have the smell of durian in your face. Be sure to keep up to date with the newest episode by hitting that subscribe and that bell notification button. Thank you for tuning in. See you.